and welcome to Salesforce Posse podcast, recorded on the 31st of March 2021. And we're recording this in glorious Technicolor. So if you want to watch rather than listen, you can by watching us on YouTube. Just go to salesforceposse.com slash YouTube. But on this episode, we take a look at the potential impact that MFA will make when Salesforce makes it required for all orgs. And also Salesforce announces a new backup and restore service. And finally, we go through some Salesforce ecosystem news with myself, Francis Pinder, and no one else. Unfortunately, Anoop was last seen walking into Salesforce Tower in London and never came out. Some say he was taken by Mark Benioff to work on a top secret project to take over the world. Others say he just happened to get a job working at Salesforce and doesn't have the time to do the podcast. I personally believe the latter, but in all seriousness, congratulations on your new role as a Salesforce Senior Program Architect for Insurance. We wish you well. So first up, it is the Salesforce Ecosystem News. So Salesforce has declared that the nine to five workday is dead. They have announced that they are rolling out plans to let employees work remotely on a permanent basis. Once it's safe to return to the office, most Salesforce employees from around the globe will only go into the office one to three days a week. Employees who don't live near an office, as well as those with roles that don't require an office, will work remotely full time. Now, this is all based on employee feedback. They found that nearly half only wanted to go into the office a few times a month. At the same time, 80% of employees said they wanted to maintain a connection with a physical space. So Salesforce is going to be redesigning its workspaces as community hubs with collaboration and breakout spaces. A new community event has been planned for June 2021 called Consultancy Dreaming, and it's created for anyone who already is or wants to be a Salesforce consultant. I've posted a link with the details in the show notes if you want to find out more. So MFA, or multi-factor authentication, has been around for some time, but Salesforce has decided that from the 1st of February 2022, they are going to be enforcing MFA on all Salesforce orgs. Now, I am a big advocate for enabling MFA in your orgs, as threats from bad actors are increasing and getting more sophisticated. Now, there is a really great visualization if you want to take a look at the world's biggest data breaches. And they're on the website, Information is Beautiful. And you can take a look and you can just see the, the number of at at hacks and the scale of the hacks are just increasing year on year. Um, and then you can take a look, look at the link in the show notes if you want to take a look for yourself. But even today, there's been a bit of a Twitter storm from an Indian app provider, which it looks like they've had around 8.2 terabytes of data stolen, which some people are saying is the biggest leak of KYC data in history. Um, and KYC, if you don't know, is know your customer data, which is used in the financial services to prove people's identity. So they're potentially putting 3.5 million of their customers at risk in India. Although at the moment, the company is denying the hack, but we'll see what happens as it all comes out in the wash. One of the first things I thought when Salesforce said that they were making MFA mandatory was why? Now, many other SaaS providers do have MFA capabilities, but they don't enforce its use. So I have zero insider information about this. So don't read anything into this whatsoever. But I kind of think it kind of comes down to two reasons. 
Firstly, potentially, that Salesforce have seen a rise in attacks on the Salesforce platform via customers' machines. Because in my opinion, the customer end of Salesforce security is usually the area that has most room for improvement, shall we say, uh, and it's basically the weakest link in the chain. And that's why, why I'm so pro implementing MFA, because it's one of the simpler and biggest impacts you can make to enhance your security of your org. As at the end of the day, the data that's in your Salesforce org is really the new oil for business, and so you need to protect it. Now, the other reason that they may be kind of making this mandatory is just that Salesforce is being more proactive with security, which is what I think is probably more likely. And, and Salesforce has been you know, really proactive for a number of years, but the tipping point, I think, for me was around, well, just over 15 years, around 15 years ago, when Salesforce themselves were a victim of a phishing attack, which exposed some customer details. Now, at the time, they said a phisher tricked someone into disclosing a password, but the intrusion didn't stem from a security flaw in application or their database. So really, this is kind of a classic reason why you should use MFA, because you want to protect your Salesforce org from that human factor. Uh, and for me, this is really when Salesforce kind of changed its stance on security and really started putting Salesforce trust at the heart of absolutely everything they do. But OK, so what is MFA? So it's all about increasing the user's security when they authenticate to a system. And it's based on having two factors of authentication or strong authentication, which is something you know, like a username and password, and something you have, which could be a mobile app or a physical MFA device that you can kind of plug into your computer or your tablet. Tablet. Now, don't mistake SMSs and emails for strong authentication because these are actually weaker because you've got tools and there could be um, apps on your phone that could be reading your text messages. And also emails could be going over the internet in plain text. So they really are, they really are quite weak. Now, technically, implementing MFA is relatively easy to enable in Salesforce, uh, but it does have some external business challenges. So things like, you know, what if your staff doesn't have, you know, a company issued mobile phone to install the kind of Salesforce MFA app or the MFA app you want to use? Do you buy them a new mobile phone? Do you say, oh, could you use your personal one? You know, well, what do you, how do you go about that? Um, what about if your, your Salesforce partner is providing kind of a 24 hour follow the sun support and currently logs into your org with only one login. Potentially down the now need extra logins to support the users around the globe to support your org. Uh, also, you may be that you've got staff that have job sharing agreements where they're sharing their job and therefore you're kind of sharing the Salesforce logins for them as well. Uh, so again, it gets a bit tricky. How do you handle the MFA device? Do you kind of have one mobile phone that they have to pass to each other? Or what inevitably is going to happen is you probably need to buy another license. So it could have an impact to your licenses. Also, there's other things like, you know, what if a member of staff forgets their MFA device and they need to log in? And, you know, you can create one time passwords and things like that. But there's lots of kind of questions and kind of process that you need to work on to kind of figure this all out. Now, Salesforce has a, a, quite a good uh, multi-factor authentication assistant in your Salesforce org where you can kind of find out how to plan your MFA project. Just search for multi-factor authentication authentication assistant in your setup uh, in Salesforce to find it. I've actually also created a quick free mini course to address some of these questions that are not found in the Salesforce assistant, which you can also access by going to admin to architect.com slash MFA.
So next up is the Salesforce backups. So back in July 2020, Salesforce retired its data recovery service. Now it had its limitations, but it was good to know that you had the ability to get a point and time data backup from Salesforce of all your Salesforce data. Although it did come at a cost starting at around $10,000 and could take a couple of weeks to get your data. But now Salesforce has announced that the service is coming back and is going to be available immediately. But one of my biggest problems I have with Salesforce backups is there's no service either on the platform or via an app exchange app partner that can actually back up your entire org. So for example, there could be protected data which is stored in an app exchange app that you don't have access to. Yet your Salesforce org can be changed by you via the Salesforce app and stat data Will, could be stored within these protected areas. Now, the other challenge is that when you actually run a restore, there are no tools that can actually restore your data directly back into the Salesforce database. It has to go through your process logic. So it only takes one validation rule to fire, which could result in not being able to restore your data. Or you've got processes that fire out emails and things like that that you wouldn't want to fire out if you were doing re the re a restore. So some backup tools do have features that try and disable your process logic before restoring, but it still can be a bit of a challenge. But in my opinion, it's far from all bad news. As we've seen in the past, if something happens to your data or configuration, which was a result of something happening on Salesforce's side in a data center or something like that, then Salesforce is gonna bust a gut to resolve it for you. And they have many kind of disaster recovery and backup capabilities just baked into the platform uh, to protect the orgs. It's just that we can't use utilize them for kind of the, the incidents that happen at our end. Hence, we kind of, there's still a need, in my opinion, for those third party backup solutions. Because if you do have an accident, then you need to fix it. Now, it could be that integrations that you've got go a bit caca and overwrite a load of data in your org or a user accidentally deletes or updates a large amount of data. And these apps are just kind of really good at kind of detecting that and allowing you to kind of identify what has changed or been deleted and then kind of restoring and rectifying that issue. But Salesforce said during its announcement that the Salesforce community has pointed out that the data recovery service value lies in its very existence and knowing it's there in the event of emergency, which is definitely what it should be used for. But also, it looks as if Salesforce is actually in investing in this service to improve it because they're saying that this summer they'll be piloting a backups and restore service natively in the platform. I'm just kind of hoping that this comes with the capabilities to give you the option to kind of bypass that business logic when you're restoring data. So, and also that they kind of expose that feature to the other app exchange providers because that would be really cool. For more information about this service, as well as the free data export service, check out the links below in the show notes. So that is it for this episode of the Salesforce Posse podcast or videocast if you're watching online. Now, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you do have any news or announcements or shout outs you want to give on the Salesforce Posse podcast, then give me a shout either on Twitter at Salesforce Posse or by using the contact form on the salesforceposse.com website. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Meditation for Salesforce, the app that adds 10 seconds delay between every record save you do so your Salesforce users can meditate in between every save. So long. <laughs>